Welcome on Watches TV here at the Watches Club in the old town of Geneva. Today we have the pleasure of having Stefan von Gutten, who's going to talk about this. This is his first piece under his own name, well actually Autrive, but this is indeed the first time you sign your own uh, timepiece. And listen to this, okay, okay, it's already a tourbillon, but it has 1,000 hours of power reserve. Okay, this is just for a little teaser, but first of all, uh, Stefan, well, welcome. And could you tell us a little bit where the idea came from and what's the inspiration? A little bit of a, also about your background, actually, because there's a lot of this behind this piece. Yeah, yeah, I come from an engineer and watchmaker's family. So um, for me, it's quite logical to be in the watchmaking world. And uh, when I saw the, an article about uh, this uh, Pope watch that was uh, famous in my family, I thought maybe that's something I should uh, bring up again and uh, start my, uh, my own brain with that. What was the particularity of this uh, timepiece for the Pope? That's the, the huge power reserve, because it was a 40 days uh, power reserve watch, pocket watch, and that was the inspiration, because I was always at Patek Philippe or at Ulysse Nana, I was always seeking for a huge power reserve. For me, in watchmaking, there, there is the accuracy and the power reserve. And of course, when, once you reach a, a, an accuracy which is enough, uh, precise, enough uh, for the user, then you, you, you will search for the high power reserve. And uh, at the end of the day, the, the accuracy is uh, most of the time sufficient. So uh, my, my aim here, my goal is to, to improve the, the power reserve. So coming back to that Pope watch, uh, what period are we talking about? The Pope watch was in 1888 made by my grand grand grandfather uh -huh. uh, Irene Aubry and um, it was um, it was a, a gift for the for the pope and uh, the, the, the 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 main feature was the, the huge power reserve okay. and there's this notion of power reserve kind of staying in the family because there was another piece also exact that's something in my gene, maybe, yes, yes, <laughs> in my genes. You can't yeah. escape from it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, I started to think about that. I, I, I tried to, to remodelize the, uh -huh. the watch in, on, in my computer. And then uh, I, I, I brought some modification on it to, to have a wristwatch instead of a pocket watch. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And there are indeed some design characteristics that we'll, we'll talk a little bit uh, further. But uh, I was uh, just mentioning before, there's another watch of your family, which also had was quite famous at the time, produced in uh, mass numbers with a high power reserve. Can you explain the, us a little the, about that? You're right, yes. That was the Hebdo mass watch, uh -huh. uh, also invented by uh, Irene Aubry. And uh, it's quite famous uh, still today because it was uh, uh, they, they produced 1,000 watches per day in La Chaux de Fonds, and uh, it had this uh, specification of eight days of power reserve. Uh -huh. And so the the, the construction, the, the basic uh, architecture behind is quite the same. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. And that's my in inspiration. So you worked in uh, research and development at uh, Ulysse Nardin uh, for quite a while. Uh, I guess that must have been a very interesting laboratory, considering all the creativity that uh, mm. we could have seen there in terms of movement and uh, interesting ideas, let's say. Uh, and when did you feel or wanted to go down your own route and why? Yeah, of course I'm an engineer, but beside that uh, I'm probably uh, something like a creative person. and. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very interesting to lead a project for your own, um, bring, bring your own brand because you you can uh, mix both the engineering phase plus the creativity, playing with the aesthetics and so on. So, uh, and probably it's the good moment as well because uh, if you are too young, uh, maybe you are a bit too crazy, and uh, at the end it doesn't work. So you you have to find the the right moment. And for me, it was the probably the the right age and. Uh, the right period in my life and so on. And also probably the right, I would say, doesn't sound very sexy, but also the good market dynamic because we have a lot more fresh, independent, young watchmakers that are coming on the scene that are all doing uh, pretty well. So people are more uh, prepared to listen to this kind of new offering and thing like that. So I wish you obviously all the, the best success with what you're doing. So, I mean, there's a nice conjunction of things uh, which hopefully will be good for you. Right. So I work really as an independent because uh -huh. I'm the only person in the company, in the, in the brand, Outrive. And uh, I work with uh, 
independent watchmaker with uh, their workshop in their in their apartments and so on. <laughs> so we are really uh, focusing on the craft machine yeah. of uh, watchmaking okay. instead of the industrial uh, way of producing watches. So we're going to talk a bit more about the details and the technical details of this uh, timepiece. But I just wanted to say that yeah, here in Geneva, this is what we call canicule. It's a big heat wave, so we're a little bit on the fresh, uh, refresh side uh, the, today. And maybe when you will see this video, well things might have changed and it will be back in winter, I don't know. But uh, for the time being, we're kind of cooking here. So let's go back to the timepiece. And uh, technically, I mean, you're talking about 1,000 of power reserve. So that means that you have, must have like a huge barrel uh, for this. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, the, the barrel is actually the main plate. Uh -huh. So it has an opening below the, the main plane of 35 millimeters of diameter. And this is where we place the, the barrel spring. So it's a huge place because it uh, takes almost all the, the, the place below the, the watch and uh, the, the, the barrel is quite long, it's uh, three meters long. That is huge. Uh, with a huge uh, torque, uh -huh. so um, with 30 turns. So that's the main um, properties of the watch, let's say. That's uh, this, its main sprig, which is very long and very uh, powerful. When you went to find suppliers for this spring and you asked them for a three meter long spring, what was their reaction? They, they were afraid about, uh, <laughs> about the production because uh, they didn't want to have uh, an accident using this uh, kind of spring. But uh, at the end, they, they, they found some ring to maintain the spring and to deliver, uh, yeah. to supply the, the spring to, uh, to Trive, to, to me. And uh, that, that went well, yes. Uh -huh. Well, consider this. I mean, uh, Lange, we know it with their 30-day power reserve, has a spring of 1.8 meter long, it, which was already, I mean, it's already very, very big. I mean, we're talking almost twice as big as that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's quite, uh, quite crazy. And just to put it in place must be a little bit tricky. No, uh, in fact, no, it, it goes quite well because yeah. it's, uh, we, we, the, the, the spring um, is, is maintained in a ring, and so we, just put the ring below the, the main plate and we push the spring in, in place and that's all you need to do. But of course, if it, if it touch the, the spring on the wrong place, it can, it can jump away. <laughs> but, uh, Far no, no, away. Yeah, but I, I must say it's not the, the okay. main issue. Okay, great. So let's talk about issues. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you uh, wound this? Yeah, you have to wind the, the watch thanks to the, to the bezel. Um, Mm -hmm. If you see the watch, so you have to turn the bezel anti-clockwise because you have more uh, torque mm -hmm. than using uh, a normal uh, uh, right, crown. A crown, sorry, and uh, that's that's why I've decided to use a, a bezel instead of a standard crown to rewind the watch. And so, uh, theoretically, or I mean, how many turns do you need to do to uh, get you it fully wound? You need about uh, 60 to 70 turns to okay. rewind the, the, the watch uh, completely. Okay, 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 and. Uh, uh, on the back side of the watch, this mm -hmm. is where you will find the, the kind of power, this quite spectacular power reserve indicator going to 1,000 uh, 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 hours. Um, was that, it, what was the idea there on a design perspective or a function mm. uh, perspective? I wanted to have a, a very pure watch, you know? Uh -huh. So some, some nice element placed onto the dial and so on. And, uh, First of, uh, at the beginning, I wanted to place the power reserve indicator onto the, the dial, but yeah. it was very com complex, t technically, plus it was not so visible, because if you want to, to read from zero to 1,000, then it's the, 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 the numbers will be small and so on, so I've decided to place the disc, the indicator disc below the watch, uh -huh. so you have to, to turn your watch to see how many okay. uh, pores, uh, pores there you still get in, into the watch. Uh -huh. Okay, in terms of uh, some of the other main characteristics, so you developed your own uh, tourbillon uh, and uh, you also have like a differential system. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain the functionality of this? Yeah, the differential is um, not so easy to, to develop, but uh, it's quite easy to understand. The, the idea is to have the shaft in the middle to rewind the spring, so it, it must turn in one direction. And for the normal uh, function of the watch to, to count the time, then it has to, to turn in the other direction. So thanks to the differential, we can, we can turn the, the, the shaft in both directions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Quite and easily at the end. And you talked, you mentioned before this push button at uh, uh, two o'clock. Uh, can you explain again uh, the purpose? Yes, the push button, um, 
is to, 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 to put the, the crown in a setting mode. So you push once, then there is a small dot indicator indication that gives you that tells you that you're in the setting mode, and then you can adjust the time thanks to the crown as a normal watch. Okay. And you can you can push it a second time to put it in the normal mode, and then uh, you cannot set the time, and then otherwise it will stop the movement. So yeah. you have to, to do it twice. Yes. Okay. And uh, regarding the crown uh, and the uh, time setting uh, mechanism, there's also a particularity that you see quite well indeed uh, in the, on the face of the watch. Can you explain uh, this, uh, this mechanism? There is a, I, I, actually it's not so complex. The pinion is very long because we have to go from the, uh, from the side of the watch at three o'clock to the, where the crown is to the middle yeah. to set the time. So yeah, I mean, generally it's uh, just next Most to of the time yeah. it's a small pinion yeah. with um, many, many gears and here it's only one pinion which is quite long yeah. in order to reach the, the, the setting of the But it gives a time. nice uh, aesthetic touch yes. to it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, let's now talk about this uh, big, big wheel there. Tell us uh, its purpose and... Uh, in the article that I read in the, in the past, it was called the Roue du Temps, the Wheel of Time. So I've decided to use it here again in this movement, and that's uh, the Wheel of Time of the uh, first haute rive movement. And uh, this is actually the first gear of the gear train. And it turns quite uh, slowly, mm -hmm. because otherwise uh, you will not get this uh, huge power reserve. So it turns at uh, 12, uh, one turn uh, every 12 hours, like mm -hmm. the... the the hour wheel. Okay. Yes. All right. And indeed, uh, aesthetically speaking, there's a few things that are very distinctive, I would say. Uh, talking indeed about this uh, central kind of uh, double bridge uh, feature, but I mean, it's one part. Uh, tell us a bit about, uh, about that one. The, the idea was to, to, as I said before, to have some elements placed above the dial. And it, for, to maintain the, the, the gears, you still need a bridge. So we, we, we had to find a, a nice aesthetics uh, for, the, for, this, uh, for this bridge. And then the idea was to have like four pillars coming out of the, the, the dial. And then we, we, we have designed a nice uh, geometry uh, with this bridge to, to, to go into the middle and then to, to maintain the, the gears that are in the middle, uh -huh. plus the, the two ends yeah. of the indication, of course. the time indication. And especially, I mean, I mean, often generally you see some nice technical feature on the, I mean, on the back side of a timepiece, but in here, obviously, this is just uh, completely full with this uh, big barrel, so it's nice to have these mechanical elements uh, that you can see from the, from the front. Exactly, and if you, if you are far from the watch, you think it's a, quite a classical design, and then as, as soon as you understand how it works and so, then you, you will see some modern touch. Uh -huh. So that was the idea, to have a classic plus uh, something special, because I'm an engineer and I wanted to have something special <laughs> in, okay. into the watch. Yeah. And so, I mean, this is really the, the first prototype of the watch. I mean, it basically came out of the oven this morning. Uh, so uh, what other combination will you be coming with uh, the, the, this piece? And if you maybe can tell us just also the kind of the, the basic uh, uh, size elements. Yeah, so the size of the watch is 42.5 of diameter and the height is, uh, the thickness is 12 millimeters, mm -hmm. a bit less. And uh, it comes in uh, two colors. So the one you see here is the yellow gold case with a white enamel dial mm -hmm. using a, a gold plate for the, for the dial. Mm -hmm. And the second model uh, will, will be a, gr a white gold case uh -huh. with a black enamel dial. Okay. So, and these, these two models are the, the starting uh, model for Haute Rive. All right. And indeed, you just mentioned you are starting. So, how will you precisely start? I mean, I mean, what kind of model are you going to be using uh, to, for people to be able to come to you and hopefully uh, <laughs> buy this piece? Yeah, the, the idea is to have like, um, to, to have subscription pieces. So, I will produce um, five pieces in yellow gold and five pieces in uh, white gold. Uh -huh. And then I have some ideas for the next developments, of course. Okay. Uh, it is called Honoris. So that's the, the, the line that I will develop as the classical line, uh, paying tribute to my grand-grand-grandfather. Uh, and then I have some ideas for, for new models, 
will have a more contemporary, contemporary touch. Okay, yeah, well, I completely trust you on this. One last final technical question. When you're talking uh, powers of 1,000 hours, uh, have you calculated all the, I mean, the, the variations of amplitude between when it's fully wound and when you're reaching at 500 mm -hmm. and 200 hours left? Well, how does that behave? Uh, actually, it's, it's, it's an advantage for the for the loss of amplitude because uh, because the the power reserve is so long, from one day to the next day, you don't lose so much amplitude. Uh -huh. So it's quite uh, constant in okay. terms of amplitude, and uh, I, I think at the end it's an advantage for the accuracy. Okay. Yeah. But um, uh, yes, uh, at the end of the of the uh, of the power reserve, you still uh, lose amplitude, and then you, you will lose the accuracy. That's normal. Yeah. For like for every mechanical watch. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations to you. I really wish you the best of luck. And uh, I mean, the next few days obviously are going to be a little bit in interesting and important for you. So uh, I mean, you know what to do if you're interested. Autry. Oh yeah. Well, actually, where does this Autry uh, name ca come from? Good question. We forgot, we forgot that one. <laughs> that was the workshop from my uh, grand grand grandfather. Okay. The, the name of the of his last workshop workshop was Autry because it was close to the. Lake Neuchâtel, uh -huh. and um, because the Neuchâtel, Lake Neuchâtel was moving up and down, uh, depending on the on the rains, not the tide, no, not the tide, <laughs> the rains. Uh, it was it was in a place a bit higher than the, the lake level, and it was this place was called Haute Rive, and he, he named his uh, workshop Haute Rive. Okay, and uh, I found it was a nice um, tribute tribute yeah. for him, and, and so this is All why right. I chose Excellent. Haute Rive for this bird. Well, now we know everything. So thanks for watching, thanks for dropping by, and well, you know the drill. Viva Watchmaking, and see you soon. Bye.